everyone. My name is Miss Summer. I'm a children's specialist at the Perryville branch. Thank you so much for joining me today for do-it-yourself music shakers. What is a music shaker? Well, it's a type of percussion instrument similar to a maraca. You basically need a container and some materials that fit inside the container and make a noise when you shake it. This is a great activity for families and kids to do together. And you can start with items that you find around the house right now. I started by looking in my closets and then in my cupboards and finally in my recycle bin. I found everything that we need to make music shakers. Are you ready to get started? Let's do it. First, you need to choose a container for your music shaker. There are lots of different things you could use. I have a few examples, and then you choose what's gonna work best for you. Plastic water bottles are awesome. Often you can find these in your recycle bin. There are tall ones and fat ones and short ones. Depending on the size you choose, the music shaker will sound a little bit different. I like something a little bit thicker because the thin plastic ones often smush up after just a few uses. Also make sure that your bottle has a lid to go with it because that's gonna be very important. I also chose a few small ones. Why would I wanna make such a teeny music shaker? Well, because it's perfect for baby's hand. So if you want to make one for your baby brother or sister, these are great. This is an empty shampoo bottle for travel that I found in my bathroom. This is a great one. This is an empty spice bottle that I found in my kitchen cabinet. And finally, lots of us have seen this one before. Maybe you put snacks in it for school or for outings. Again, make sure these all have lids. And finally, if you don't want to use plastic, how about some paper? This is the inside roll of a paper towel roll, and this is the inside roll of a toilet paper roll. So when you're done with the paper towels or the toilet paper, save these. These make great shakers, almost like rain sticks. All right, once you've picked your container, we're gonna figure out what to put inside of them. It can be fun to scavenger around your house to find different materials to put in your music shaker container. I encourage you to be very creative. I started in the kitchen and I found some wonderful stuff. First, some yellow slip peas. Then, some green lentils. Ooh. After that, some red chili beans. <laughs> then, some small white navy beans. And finally, can you guess what this is? Rice! You can find some wonderful dried beans, legumes, and rice in your kitchen. They make fantastic materials for music shakers. After I was done in the kitchen, I headed to my craft room. Miss Summer loves to do arts and crafts. And often, she has some leftover materials. Some of these things can be used in music shakers. First, I found some colored plastic mosaic tiles. Then, I found some jewels. Ooh, they're not really jewels, but Miss Summer likes to pretend they are. Then, I found some round beads and some star beads. After that, I found some colored shells. See those? Listen to those shells. And finally, I found some fun buttons. I like to sew too. 
and sometimes I have some buttons in my sewing drawer. All kinds of shapes and sizes. And also just some little ones like you would find on anybody's shirt or pants. There, I think I'm set with materials for my music shaker container. What did you find? All right, now that you have your container and your materials for inside your container, let's get started on filling it up. Did you know that maracas are traditionally made out of gourds or coconut shells and filled with dried beans or pebbles? Perhaps you can find small pebbles and other materials outdoors to use in your music shaker. Let's first make a music shaker out of a plastic water bottle. This is the one that I chose. I like this bottle because it has a big opening. That'll make it easier for me to put items inside. If you want more of a challenge, try a water bottle with a smaller opening. All right, I'm gonna use some yellow split peas, some red chili beans, and some green lentils. Hmm. This is a fun part of the activity because I get to practice my fine motor skills. Try picking one teeny tiny lentil up and putting it inside the bottle. How about one split pea? Oh, that takes forever, but it sure is fun. I think I might want to take a handful and stick them in. How about an even bigger handful? Is that going to work? Oh no! I spilled them all over the table. Hmm, what could I use to get a whole bunch of split peas in the bottle all at once? How about we try using a funnel? It's fun to explore different tools you can find in the kitchen to make your music shakers. Here we go. I'm going to put a whole handful in. Oh, that works so much better. None of them landed on the table. Now I might try using a spoon. I like to practice using a spoon. This is a soup spoon. Let's see if I can line it up with my bottle and pour the split peas in. How about some lentils? And now how about some chili beans? Oh, that was a little bit harder. Hmm, maybe I could try using my funnel again. There we go. Try using different types of spoons you find in the kitchen. What kind of spoon is this? It's an ice cream scoop. With an ice cream scoop, you can scoop up a lot of beans or lentils. Now I'm going to pour them in my funnel. Where did they go? I think they got stuck. Shake, 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 shake. Here they go. Why do you think the funnel helps me get a whole bunch of beans and lentils into my bottle? Look how much bigger the opening for the funnel is than the opening to my bottle. Now, I want to give my shaker a test run. Here we go. Put the lid on nice and tight. Let's hear what it sounds like. Oh, wow, I like that one. Look how pretty it is with all the different colors. And I like the nice, loud, sharp sound it makes. be fun to try making a smaller music shaker, one that a baby can use. I'm going to use this spice container. I don't need this part, but I do need the bottle and the lid. How about we put in some of the craft supplies that Miss Summer found? 
maybe a few of these beads and a couple fun buttons, a mosaic tile. Oh, I definitely want a few jewels. Hey, you know what we can do to make it even more fun? Try using a set of tongs like these that I found in my kitchen to pick up the items and put them inside the bottle. Let's do it. There we go. It's not as hard as it looks. All right. Look how beautiful that is. All the colors and shapes inside there. Baby's gonna love this one. I'm gonna put on the lid and give it a test try. I wonder what it sounds like. Here we go. Oh, that sounds very different than my first one. Let's compare them. They're different, but I like them both. How much fun is that? Another fun way of making a music shaker is by using measuring spoons and measuring cups. That way I get to practice my awesome math skills while making my musical instrument. Let's give it a try. I'm going to measure one tablespoon of rice. Here we go. Oh, do you think I can pour that into that opening? Hmm, it's a little small, so I think I'll try using my funnel again. Here we go! Yay! Now, I think I want more rice than that. How much rice is that? One tablespoon. Hmm, how about I add half a cup? That's a lot more rice. All right, here I go. I'm going to measure half a cup of rice. Use my funnel and pour it in. There we go. Now if I pour nice and slow, it goes right through my funnel into my bottle. But what if I pour super fast? I think some of the rice is stuck in the funnel. That's okay. And shake that funnel until all the rice is in the bottle. There we go. How much rice is in the bottle now? One tablespoon plus half a cup of rice is in there. Now let me add a few lentils. Hmm. I don't think I want that many lentils. How about I just use fourth a cup? Let me measure my lentils. I'm going to use my funnel again because this is a very small opening. Here we go. Pour nice and slow. The lentils go through the funnel and into the bottle without any problem. <gasps> Yay! Now let's look at what that looks like. There's a lot more rice in there than there are lentils. You see the difference? All right, let's put our lid on. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna test it. Here we go. Ooh, I like that sound. Nice, heavy, deep sound. Let's compare it to our other bottles. Every shaker sounds different. Why do you think each shaker is different? Well, we use different materials in each shaker. And also, each shaker is a different size. 
big, medium, and small. Wow, we're using all kinds of math skills today. Now, if we're happy with our plastic bottle music shakers and we don't want to add anything else to them, it's time to secure the lids. We don't want the lids falling off when we're playing with them. And we don't want baby taking off the lid and swallowing what's inside. That would not be good. There are a couple different ways you can make sure the lid stays on. Epoxy glue works really well. Hot glue or duct tape if you don't want to use glue. This is definitely a part of the activity that adults need to help with. I think I'm gonna hot glue this lid on. Let's give it a try. Make sure there's a lot of glue inside the lid, around the edges. And when you're done, screw the lid back on tight. Let it set for a few minutes. And now, I can't screw that lid off. Yay, it works! You can also use epoxy glue. You need to squirt this out and mix it together. Put it inside the lid and do exactly what you did with the hot glue lid. Screw it back on and let it set for a few minutes. And finally, if you'd rather use tape, duct tape is the best tape. Take off a piece, wrap it around the bottle and the lid where they meet, squeeze it tight, make sure it's stuck on there well, All right, and that pretty much seals the music shaker. There you go, three different ways to make sure your lids don't come off. If you'd like to make a different type of shaker or you just don't have any plastic bottles on hand, then use a paper tube, a short one or a long one. The fun part of using a paper tube is it's easy to decorate the outside of it. That's a fun activity in itself. For this one, I use my crins to color it. And for this smaller one, I use my favorite markers to decorate it. You can use crins, markers, paint, oh, all kinds of fun things to decorate the outside of your tube, maybe even stickers. See what you have around the house and decorate your tube. Once you're done with that, you want to seal the end of your tube. Just one end, you want the other end open so that we can put our noise making materials inside. For this one, I used foil and a nice thick rubber band. I tore off a piece of foil about that size I folded it in half. Oh, that looks great. I have heavy duty foil, so that's nice and thick. You want your ends to be nice and thick so that when you're playing with your shakers, none of the materials inside pop out. This piece is a little big, so I'm gonna trim it by just tearing off a little bit of the end of it. All right, that's about the right size. Then I wrapped it around the end of my tube. I took a nice big thick rubber band and I wrapped that around the outside of the foil two times. Enough to make it nice and tight, but you don't want to squish your tube. For this one, I used wax paper. Again, tore off a piece about the same size as the foil I tore off. I folded it in half. I didn't think that was quite thick enough, so I decided to fold it in half again. There we go. 
Oh, that piece might be a little too long. So I'm gonna tear off one end. I want enough paper or foil to cover the end, but I don't want a lot of extra. Then I did exactly like what I did with the foil. I placed it on the end and shaped it to fit the end of the tube. This time, I took scotch tape and I wrapped it around several times. If you're gonna use scotch tape, use a lot of it to make sure that your foil or your paper is in place and not going to move. I wasn't quite sure if the scotch tape was going to hold that in place. So after I used the scotch tape, I decided to bring in the big guns, the duct tape. I tore off a nice long piece. I split that piece in half, and this is what I got. You can see the other half wrapped around my tube. Once I had the right size of duct tape, again, my wax paper was already on with my scotch tape. I wrapped my duct tape around that just to make it extra secure. There we go. Now we're ready to put our sound making materials inside. For my paper tube shakers, I'm going to use some rice and some beans inside. A spoon is a great way for me to get rice inside this long tube. There we go. Perfect. I think I'll add some navy beans too. How does that sound? Oh, I like that sound. Perhaps I'll add a little bit more rice. There we go. For my shorter tube, I think I'll put in some of the lentils and split peas that I used in my plastic bottle shaker. There we go. Oh, nice. For paper tube shakers, less is more. You do not want them to be too heavy with the materials inside. What's going to make the noise is the space around whatever you put inside and the motion of shaking it back and forth. Paper tube shakers are more fragile or delicate than plastic bottle shakers, so keep that in mind. They're probably for older kids who can be a bit more gentle with them. If you have what you want inside, it's time to seal the tops, just like you sealed the bottoms. Here I have my wax paper and my tapes. And for this one, my foil and my rubber bands. One advantage of bottles is that you can see into them. With the paper tubes, you cannot see what's inside. I highly recommend for babies using the plastic bottle for two reasons. One is it's much, much safer. I would not give a baby a paper tube shaker. Second is they can see what's inside the tube. So not only are they getting auditory stimulation, they're also getting visual stimulation. That's really exciting for baby. All right, I'm gonna finish my tubes and then we're gonna have a shaker party. So now that you've made your music shaker or shakers, it's time to make some noise. play along to some background music. Are you ready for some samba? Would you like to learn how to make other kinds of instruments at home? Check out the ebook, Making Musical Instruments, a kid-friendly, step-by-step illustrated guide on how to make and play everything from a washboard to a tamaru. It's available through Hoopla. With the Cecil County Library card, Hoopla access is easy and free. Just go to Cecil County Public Library's website, click on the Digital Library tab, look for the Hoopla logo, and follow the instructions.
Don't have a library card? No worries. We now offer an online card for Cecil County residents who don't already have a library card. It's quick and easy to sign up from home. Go to Cecil County Public Library's website, tap on the Digital Library tab, select Online Card, and follow the instructions. A parent or guardian is required to register children ages 12 and younger. Online cards expire on June 1st, 2020. Thank you for joining me at home for Do-It-Yourself Music Shakers. Now go make some music!